you can't tell already, this is my angry face. And, and I'm the only person to blame here. I've caused a bit of an issue. I've made a bit of a flipping mistake. We came up yesterday, um, we fitted the new towing cover, which I'm gonna do in a future video uh, because it's quite interesting, that one. And we did a few things inside and in the process of doing things inside, I switched the caravan on, I turned the radio on, I showed Andrew the new speakers, bits and bobs, whatever else, switched some lights on, la 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 la. Went back outside, fitted the towing cover and just generally spent a lovely morning with Angela faffing around here in the van and it was lovely and we sorted bits and bobs out. We packed up, we went home. Guess what I forgot to do? That's right, I forgot to switch the caravan off and I left it on with all its lights, the radio still running, everything's still going here inside and I got a notification that the battery voltage was below 12 volts. Well, I reinstalled iNet back into the system and I set an alarm up to let me know when the battery voltage drops. And I had absolutely zero opportunity to come up here and rectify it because the landowner here closes this place up at night, which obviously that's fair enough. And yes, I came up here this morning and I've just tested it on the multimeter and the battery is 11.4 volts. Weirdly, the alarm still works um, and I had to dis disengage it before you know, coming in, which is quite interesting. Now, ordinarily, that wouldn't be a problem. I would just take the battery home, charge it up again and bring it back. But I am like many other people that have insurance policies that stipulate that the caravan must have a tracker and must have an alarm enabled when it's not in use. For instance, when it's in storage. Uh, that's exactly what I have here. And I cannot remove the 12 volt supply. I could probably go and buy another battery and put it in place whilst I'm charging that one up. But, you know, quite frankly, the thing's got a solar panel and it should be able to maintain itself. Apart from when you've got idiots like me that come along and switch everything on and don't switch them off. So um, taking the battery off of the van, taking it home to charge it is not really an option because if I do that, I'll invalidate my caravan insurance policy and you know what will happen as soon as I do that something will happen and then I'll be uh, invalidated. So what's the solution? Well I've got a battery charger and I've got a power bank and these two do work well together and I know that because um, if I haven't already mentioned our previous caravan had uh, its front panel fixed last year and it was in the workshops for about 11 days and during those 11 days with no charge going into the battery and things being switched on did take a significant charge out of that battery so uh when i got it hurt when i got the caravan back i plugged this charger on and it sorted the solution it sorted the battery out for me no problems at all so um that being said i'm going to show you the um the charger which i've got and also the power block which i'm going to use to do it it's not sponsored by anybody by the way this is just stuff that i have Okay, so this is the charger which I'm using. It's a Yoasa YCX L12. It's specifically designed for leisure batteries. Let me just spin it around there so you can actually see it a bit better. Um, I don't know if you can see there, across the bottom there, but you can actually choose the varying charging currents between two amps, eight amps, and 12 amps. But also, and more specifically, you can also choose the battery construction type. So be it a gel, AGM, a wet battery, or a lithium. Uh, point to mention on the lithium, that if you do use a lithium, you've got to make sure you've got a battery control module installed in the battery so it can change the current uh, charge rate depending on its temperature. That's quite important. Um, I've used this before on the previous caravan, as I've mentioned already, and it did a fantastic job. Um, great bit of kit. There's just a couple of things I want to mention about it. When you do purchase it, it comes with a Euro adapter. So it comes with Euro pins, and it comes with a plug here for the UK, which you basically install. That's great and everything, but it's a bit loose and it does come off occasionally. At the other end of the charging system is the crocodile clips. And these are lovely. These are really good quality and they do clamp onto pretty much everything. They are fused, obviously, which you'd expect. And they're connected via power pole connections. I think these are 30 amp versions. I might be wrong, but I think these are 30 amp power pole connections. And that's great, except they also can be a bit loose. And I have had it where they're literally just half in, half out like so. And they don't quite make the connection, but they, they look like they're connected. So that's another thing to check. So basically before you switch it on, double check all your connections and uh, make sure that you're all right. 
Let me show you the power block, which I'm going to use. So the Jackery I want to go through is this one. It's a thousand watt variant. It's got two AC outlets. It's a fantastic bit of kit. I use it a heck of a lot, in fact. Uh, this is the one that I usually keep in the boot of my car um, for when I'm doing bits and bobs. I usually keep it charged up by using uh, the input and plugged into a 12 volt socket. It keeps it charged up most of the time. And at the moment, it's at 96%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the uh, charger into this onto the battery and then walk away for 24 hours and come back and see what's happened. And of course it's a rat nest of cables because I've just picked it up from the counter. <laughs> Always the way, isn't it? Okay. Let's expose some terminals here. Black to black, red to red. Like so, make sure that's got a good connection on it. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a step over this because it's all covered up. So I'm just going to put a step on this so that people don't walk through it. Okay, adjusted camera angle done. Let's get the jackery up here. And I'm going to put it around this way so you can see what's going on. I hope you can see that. I cannot. Let's just plug it in, but not switch it on just yet. Not forgetting to connect our terminals that we've just put onto the battery. Like so. Good. Right. Switch it on. And then we should start seeing some flashing lights on here. So there you go. You can see it's now doing its thing. This thing is taking some power. 160 watts of power coming out of the Jackery now. And this thing is now starting to charge through. It goes through its various phases when it charges up. Being a smart charger, it does more than just applying a flat current, a flat voltage. It does a number of things. So that's very, very helpful. Right, and that's it. I'm gonna leave it now for a day, maybe a couple of days, uh, and we'll come back and we'll see what has happened, whether it has actually fully recharged the battery. At the moment, the actual charger is fighting the solar panel. Because it's quite sunny today, although bitterly cold, because it's quite sunny, there's actually decent amounts of charge coming in from the solar panel, which is the first time that's happened in a number of weeks. We've had very little sunlight here, specifically where we are. So at the moment, the charger is fighting the solar panel. One of them will win and eventually the battery will get charged up. But we'll see what happens over the next few hours. So. I'm going to leave it alone, go home, get myself a nice warm cup of tea, and then uh, we'll come back in a couple of days and see what's happened. Two games of Magic the Gathering, one annoying reference to SpongeBob SquarePants, 16 cups of tea, and a trickle charge later. <laughs> oh, i got to keep that in. Okay, it's a couple of days later now. Let's unlock the van. And let's see what the state of the battery actually is. Okay, let's see what's happened here with the Jackery. Uh, the Jackery says it's 46%, but it switched itself off. So I'm guessing then that did its job and wasn't pulling any current, which is quite interesting. Let's uh, switch the van on. Full bars. Okay, good. That doesn't tell me any numbers, so I'm just going to dial into the Bluetooth and then we'll have a look see what that says. So I just want to point out a couple of things here on this app. You can see at the top there it says the battery is full. And if you scan further on down, you can see the battery voltage is at 13.4 volts. This is the only place on the caravan, by the way, that you can actually see what the voltage is. I'm going to be making change to that in an upcoming project. But as you can see, it's all looking good. If we look at the front of the controller, We've got the MPP light on, we've got the charge light on, but crucially, and for the first time ever, we've got a battery full light. I say first time ever, since we've had this caravan, that has never been illuminated. So this is all looking very, very positive. No pun intended. Right, and there we go, crisis averted, I hope. Um, I need to do something about that panel. Every caravan I've had so far, has had a switch, a physical switch, that just a quick glance to, you can see whether the caravan is switched on or switched off. It doesn't need to be lit up, 
just a switch on the on or the off position. I need to do something about this because I can't keep making that mistake of did I turn the caravan off? And here's my idea. I'm going to put a 12 volt LED lamp up there, um, just a panel lamp, a really nice looking one so it doesn't look out of place. A very dimly lit yellow light I think is enough for me to have a look up there and know that the caravan is switched on. I think if I just put it up here in this corner, I don't think it's going to look too out of place. But I know that if I look at that and I can see it's illuminated, I know the caravan is still switched on. So I think that's something I'm going to do in the future. I need to take that panel out anyway because there's other jobs that I'm going to do. This button here, for instance, is not used. And I'm going to fit a tank sensor onto that one uh, so I can see how full the uh, onboard water tank is using the same doobies there. That's going to be quite an interesting job to do. That's a project coming up. Um, so I hope that has helped. Of course, I made a video about leisure batteries, winterizing them, how to look after them over winter. Um, I did that a few years ago. I've put a link to that in the description. I've put a link to that in the corner. Um, but basically, you can't just forget about your leisure battery at this time of year. And I think we've all been in the same boat that the weather has not been great. And it means that there hasn't been a lot of charge getting into the batteries. That has compounded a lot of people's problems. So if you can get a charger onto your battery, if you need to get another battery to just swap them over um, temporarily whilst they're in storage, there's no reason why you can't go for a cheap car battery because you're not going to be using it whilst you're away. Maybe just swap them over there and then, you know, uh, one in one out every four weeks or so. Um, or invest in a portable power station like something like this. I mean, the price of them has shot down um, and uh, you wouldn't need a, a thousand watt for that charger either. A 500 watt would be perfectly uh, usable to be fair. So you know what, maybe it's the time to invest in one of those. I find it incredibly useful actually. And we did use it whilst we were away off grid the last time we were off grid. Um, and that was very useful in fact, because we used it for the kettle, uh, saved on a lot of gas. So uh, I've put a link to that charger, that station down below. There are thousands of them on the market now, so don't necessarily go for that one. Uh, but I do recommend that charger though. That is very worthwhile investing into. Um, it looks after my leisure battery when I don't. So there we go, guys. I hope that's been a useful wake up call for me and a useful video for you. Um, do let me know what your thoughts are, or if you've got any suggestions on looking after your battery. Um, yeah, and uh, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon, if you can do all of that. And if I've got enough power, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care, bye-bye.